Next in the process, we're going to be talking about anterior occlusion. Dr. Lip, what is anterior occlusion about? So when it comes to the anterior occlusion, I want you to think about the incisors. It's all about the incisors. Like we said previously, there are three planes of space and everything that we examine, we look at separately in three planes of space. The first plane of space is the vertical. So we have the upper incisor and the lower incisor. Let's say there's no overlap and you can see space between the incisal edges. We would call that term anterior open bite. This is a big deal because you can't chew anything if your teeth are not in contact. So anterior open bite is a big deal. When it comes to words like open bite and cross bite, we always are very specific about the location. This picture, you could see all of the incisors are not in contact. There's separation between them. That is a anterior open bite. When you have reported a clinical problem that is significant, like anterior open bite, your next step would be, why is this happening? And there could be multiple reasons. You're engaging in a problem-solving exercise. So let's look at the cephalometric image here. Um, the careful observer will note that the upper incisor and lower incisor are excessively proclined. Look where they start in the bone and look where they end up. When you have excessively proclined incisors, that can sometimes lead to anterior open bites. So making these kind of connections is very useful as a clinician. Another condition uh, in the vertical plane that uh, involves the upper and lower incisor is severe overbite. Mm -hmm. Normally, you should have some overbite, the upper incisor covering a bit of the lower incisor. But when you cannot see a lower incisor, that's severe overbite. And that also needs to be reported. Severe is a powerful word, especially uh, to recognize severe problems, because that becomes a trigger to the clinician. You must counsel the patient about these conditions.